What's going on YouTube? Welcome to the channel. This is basically episode one, we're going to call it, but this is kind of the first lesson that we're going to be going through on a weekly basis. If you've been following me on Instagram, you probably know that I've been through a cut. You can kind of tell my clothes are a little bit baggy. We're getting like pajama pants down here. Um, I've said that I'm not going to buy new clothes until 185 pounds, so I've got about 10 pounds to go. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it because this is kind of getting awkward and all my clothes kind of fit like this at this point. But uh, the reason I point that out is today we're going to take you through how I set up that plan to get going, how you're going to set up your calories, your protein to start off a fat loss plan. And how we're going to do that is we're going to tell you why we're tracking those two numbers specifically. We're going to take you through your metabolism as well and how that works just so you understand your metabolism is pretty predictable and we're going to take you through why that is and uh, setting your calories and protein. So I'm going to take you through an example myself, but it's going to be a pretty simple way to do it that you can take home and do yourself and uh, important things to consider. So the reason why we're going to do that is I think the reason why you're interested in your calories and protein is because we've gotten to a point where everyone knows that's important. Everyone knows calories and protein or more and more people are understanding that, okay, it's not carbs, it's not insulin, it's not these hormones. It really comes down to this. But if we focus only on these, these calorie numbers, then we may take a little bit too far a, a drift away from um, other things that are important. So we're going to talk about what those are as well. Otherwise, I'm excited to get going. I think these lessons are going to be really helpful for you. Um, we're going to be coming, like I said, every week with them. So let's get right into it. All right, so why calories and protein? And we're going to get into that in terms of these are the two numbers that are the most important in terms of your fat loss results. Now, they aren't the only two things that matter, and there is some detail there as to why that is. But put it this way, at the bottom line, if you get these numbers right, you get your results in terms of nutrition, which is the most important part of weight loss or fat loss. So calories in, calories out. And by, by the way, calories, way more important than protein. Protein on its own usually isn't going to be the reason you're not getting the results you want, but we're going to talk about when it is and when it isn't. But in terms of calories, these are by far the most important. If you get the calories right, you're going to lose weight. And that's what calories in, calories out calorie deficit, you may have heard these words before. What it means is your metabolism is calories out. It's the amount of calories your, bur your body burns to stay active. I'm burning calories as I stand up and I talk and I move my arms, but I'm also burning calories in order to just stay alive, pump blood, think all this stuff is happening regardless of whether I move or not. And we're going to talk about that in the next segment. But if this number is bigger than this one, you're gaining weight. If this one, if calories out, is more than calories in through food or drink, then you're losing weight. And there are no exceptions to this. It's, it doesn't matter whether you have hypothyroid and your, and your metabolism's lower. Like, there are things that, that can affect metabolism. So, but end of story, if you are not in a calorie deficit, you will not lose weight. So you cannot say that you are in a calorie deficit, but I'm not losing weight. That is just like, that is completely false. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But basically in terms of understanding calories, it is a unit of measurement. It is a measurement of energy and food has energy. So if we're talking about the, the, the food and drink you consume, that is going to be like, however much you eat in calories is going to, you know, that's how much energy you're taking in. Fat, the fat you have on your body, is the excess of energy. So it's like back in the day, having excess fat on you actually meant you were like, you know, you were rich and you had access to food. And basically, it meant you could survive when you didn't have like food around. You could deal with the winter when there wasn't food you can go grab. Your body could eat itself to sustain itself. Now, having excess body fat usually just means that, you know, you're eating too much crap and you're, you know, you're, you may not have control around food and these types of things. You're just overeating for no reason. Like there's no reason to have all that supply on your body, that excess energy in terms of stored calories, uh, because the convenience store is like just down there. Like it's just, it's, it, we have calories all around us. There's no reason to have all that stored on you. So that's kind of the way it works. So, but the key is to understand is that all calories are created equal, but all foods are not. And the reason why we have to de de decide between these two things is because some people say that, no, like not all calories are, are equal because, you know, like some food sources are better than others. It's better to eat, eat fruits than to eat Fruit Loops, which is true. And the reason why we, the reason why we need to differ between those things is because 
when we talk about lower quality foods, chips, chocolates, like you name it, all the stuff you're thinking of, the stuff you eat at restaurants and processed foods and, and uh, just highly palatable fried foods, all this stuff. The reason why, is, why, why there's a difference is because when you're eating that stuff, it's made so that you want more of it. And it's made with very low nutrients. Um, so you're not getting, you're feeling like crap after you eat them. You're not like, you want to eat more of them. You're not getting anything out of the food. You're basically putting ca calories in, but you're not actually getting much out of it. Whereas if you're eating fruits and vegetables and lean proteins and these healthy foods that have been around on the earth forever, you're taking calories in, you're filling yourself up, you're feeling good, and you're get, actually getting something from the food. So that's the difference. But let's say calories equal when you're eating like Fruit Loops and you know chips and all this stuff, and calories equal in terms of vegetables and fruits and stuff. Is your fat loss the same? Yeah. Is that going to play out in real life? Probably not. You want to stick the crappier foods for like when you need them, not every day, not all the time. But the reason why we count these calories basically is so that in terms of like a flexible dieting approach, you can at least know how many of those, you know, those treat foods and the snacks and stuff like that that you can actually fit in and still get the results you want. On the second hand, we got protein here. And because there's only two numbers in, in the nutrition uh, piece, the reason why we focus so much on protein and everyone thinks it's so important is because, like, you know, just with two things to focus on, we end up talking a lot about protein. The truth is, is that in a lot of ways, protein isn't actually going to be the differentiator between your results or not. And that changes the leaner you get because protein is going to help you keep, um, keep muscle as you lose weight because you're, as you lose weight, your body can actually choose muscle instead of fat. So protein is one key along with strength training that's going to help you keep the muscle as your body takes fat. But the other thing is, is protein is also very filling. And for some people, that's going to be very, very important. So we're going to talk about how many grams of protein to get. But if you are like 100 pounds overweight and you feel fine on 80 grams of protein, like you can lose, you can lose a ton of weight without actually focusing on getting a lot of protein like the way you might read about taking in. But some people are going to have a lot of trouble if they're not actually raising their calories, their protein up. And what we have found, like what the research does show is when we raise cal when, we, when we raise protein up higher, calories tend to come down into more normal ranges, even if people aren't counting. So getting more protein up and having more protein on a daily, uh, on a, on a meal per meal basis could help make getting this right a lot easier. And that's why it's important to talk about. But if you're like mad because one day you didn't get your protein right, or like you had a week where you didn't get it right, or you're actually losing weight, but you're worried that you're not getting your protein, you cannot worry about that so much. But it's a good thing to think about because it supports muscle, it's more filling, and it actually raises your metabolism. And in terms of getting too much protein, what the, like they've tested this in terms of getting, I think, 4.2 kilograms of or 4.2 grams per kilogram of body weight of protein, which comes out to like getting two grams per pound of body weight, which is a ton of protein. And they tested this to see if there was any health implications. All they found was people lost more fat. And the reason for that is because it raises your metabolism. Now, that sounds great, but there's a limit to how high do you want to go. And basically, you don't want to bring protein up so high that you're actually not getting fat and carbs into your body because you need those as well. But it does tell you that we're going to get into how much protein I suggest you get. But it is, there are a few reasons why you're going to want to focus on this. But also, if you have a lot of weight to lose, if you're obese, you may not need to focus on it. But if you do find yourself being hungry, it may be something to focus on a little bit closely as well. So it's not the thing that you need to get right, but it's something that you might want to think about as well. And if you are someone who is lean and wanting to get more toned, this is something you're absolutely want, gonna wanna get right along with this. So that's why we're gonna track calories and protein. As we go along, we're gonna tell you a little bit more about kind of what I want you paying attention to, but um, these are the two numbers that you wanna want to focus on and we'll get on to the next thing right now. All right guys, um, your metabolism. And the reason why we're gonna go over this is because understanding how metabolism works and even may, maybe more importantly, um, the predictability of your metabolism and the idea that people have low metabolism, high metabolism genetically is a little bit off. Um, and the reason why that's important is because when you understand this, you get a little bit more perspective on why when someone comes to me and says they're eating 1200 calories a day and not losing weight um, is just 
it creates a different set of questions for that person because when you understand this, you understand that the chances that you're someone's eating 1,200 calories a day and not losing weight is more about the fact that they have no idea how many calories they're eating and not like what's wrong with your metabolism, which is kind of what they're coming to ask me for. So the way to understand metabolism is twofold. So basal metabolic rate, BMR, you may have seen this. Uh, you may have seen resting metabolic rate, same thing. All it is is the amount of calories you burn without doing anything. Like I'm burning more calories than basal metabolic rate for myself right now just because I'm standing and moving my arms and uh, talking, which we're going to get into. But basal metabolic rate, imagine you're sleeping, doing absolutely nothing, uh, no movement whatsoever, just by being alive, that's how many calories you're burning. So the other thing to talk about is actually really interesting, and it plays into some of the misconceptions I'm going to talk about, but uh, one pound of muscle burns six calories, one pound of fat burns two calories. Now that seems really insignificant, but some people are holding an extra 200, ca 200, uh, 200 pounds of fat. So... That's actually an interesting number when some people who are overweight, just based on the amount of extra fat they're holding on their body, could be burning upwards of over 200 grams, 200, uh, 200 calories per day. And a lot of those people who are holding on that much more weight are actually typically holding on more muscle mass than the average person as well because they're walking around with a heavier body, which actually has a way of increasing their lean body mass a little bit too, despite the fact that they're still overweight. However, this is interesting because... Most of the time we think that people who are overweight have lower metabolisms. It's actually the opposite. So fat actually is metabolic. Muscle is more metabolic and just not as metabolic as you may have heard. I think the number 80, 80 calories burned for extra, for, for, for each extra pound, sorry, uh, is the number that was thrown around. And that would be like if you added 10 pounds of muscle, you would burn eight, 800 calories more a day. That's completely ridiculous and we know it's much much lower so if you do add 10 pounds of muscle you'll burn at rest 60 more calories a day which you know doesn't sound like much but it is helping so when we get on this side this is where it all changes so actually back to basal metabolic rate a good way to guess your ba basal metabolic rate is taking your body weight in pounds and multiplying it by 10. That's not an exact science, but it plays out pretty well within a couple hundred calories for pretty well everyone. And it's just a ballpark. And that's actually kind of a good thing to know because if you weigh 160 pounds, your metabolism without doing any of this stuff is probably gonna be somewhere around 15 to 1700 calories a day. Um, as far as total metabolism goes, we've got some acronyms here, NEAT, TEF, exercise, and then we'll go, go through some misconceptions. So NEAT is the biggest one. This is the one where like people have uh, slow and fast metabolisms. Some people have a way of like, you know, they're a mother of four and they are running around with kids all day. They got high NEAT. This is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And all that means is the calories you burn from moving around that is not you going to the gym and exercising. So people with high NEAT, Think about a mailman in a small town who's walking around all day. Uh, I have a client who, uh, he was like 135 pounds. What's up, Harry? Uh, 135 pounds, uh, had trouble gaining weight. He was a teacher. He was uh, a band, uh, like he was the guy like in the front, the, con what's the, what's the conductor? The conductor, yeah, sorry, sorry. And um, so he would be on his feet most of the day teaching class. He was adamant on working out seven days a week and he would just like go kill it and like every morning. And then after school, he would be doing band stuff, waving his arms around like kind of like a little bit like I am right now. So he was a furnace for burning calories. So he had trouble, bur he had trouble gaining weight on something around like 27, 2800 calories a day, which at 135 pounds is a lot of calories. So this is the biggest variable you have. Uh, the reason why some people have high metabolism is because they move around a ton. Some people have low because they sit at desks all day. So important to keep in mind that this is the this is the big variable that you have to play with. This is why Fitbits can be very useful in tracking steps and this type of thing because if you do 5,000 steps a day, you're going to have a little bit of a harder time. If you're up over 10,000, 15,000 steps a day, weight comes off a little bit easier. It's not that you can't lose weight if you're only moving like three, four, five thousand 5,000 steps but it, your, your, your calories are going to be set a little bit lower. TEF, so this is thermic effective food. So this is where your body burns energy as it digests food. 
protein, the, the important thing to understand with TEF is it's pretty small in terms of its impact on metabolism. We're talking about like five to 10% of your, like five to 10 to 15% of your metabolism. Um, protein is the one that's a little bit higher, which we already talked about. The more protein you eat, the higher metabolism. This is TEF we were talking about. Carbs and fats are a little bit more equal. So th the important thing to understand is that you're burning calories by digestion and the more protein you eat, the higher this is gonna be. That's to keep it simple and that's, what, that's part of why protein is good to get up. Exercise, of course, burns calories. And an important thing to understand that although strength training is the key to burning fat and keeping muscle and adding muscle while you're losing weight and this type of stuff, it actually doesn't burn too many calories. And like, like we continue to find out that we can like we overestimated the crap out of how um, many calories you burn when you're doing strength training. So like we're talking like 100, 150 calories, maybe 200 for a workout uh, in strength training. Whereas if you're doing cardio, um, you're going for a run, these types of things, you're going to burn more calories, but you might be like, oh my God, I've got to burn more calories. That's the game. That's not exactly true because when you're doing cardio, you're going for a run, you're not actually impacting muscle enough to keep it. So the more cardio you, you do, and the more you get into a deficit, the more your body will get rid of muscle. The key to strength training is not about how many calories you burn. It's about stimulating muscle enough to make sure it stays or even maybe grows while you're dieting so that you actually get lean and fat burns instead of muscle. Um, and if you want to put cardio on top of that, that can work as well. And the more cardio you do, the higher your calories can, can be in terms of uh, losing fat. Biggest misconceptions is something I already mentioned. And this is one of them, the, the muscle burns, how, how much muscle burns metabolically. Another one would be the fact that fat actually is metabolic and you know the more fat you have, the higher your metabolism is actually gonna be. The other one is, and it plays into this as well, is on top of the fact that fat tissue and muscle tissue and even like your bones and your different tissues have uh, different me metabolic rates associated with them. The other thing is gonna be that um, the heavier you are, like imagine strapping a 100 pound backpack to, like, to yourself and taking a walk. Do you think you're gonna burn more calories carrying that backpack or without it. So think about people who are carrying extra weight. They're walking around the entire day. This is why when people who are really overweight and they start moving, they start burning weight off like crazy because as soon as like a, a 250 pound person starts moving around, they're basically walking with an extra 100 pound backpack on there compared to other people. So their metabolism skyrockets. So these are some things to understand and this is kind of why Metabolism is pretty predictable. Aside from different hormonal situations like hypothyroid and these things that can impact it, you have to understand that for the most part, our metabolisms are based on these things. And it's not hard to ballpark it, although you're never really going to know exactly because like, obviously some days you're going to move around a little bit less. Some days you're going to move around more. Some days you might eat more protein. Some days you might exercise. Some days you might not. And over time, some of this stuff can change as well. And if you're lower weight, your metabolism goes down. If you're higher, it's probably going to be up. So we can ballpark metabolism. We can predict it, but it's gonna be varying and we're just kind of trying to understand whereabouts it is. For me right now, I'm probably somewhere in the high 2000s and as I lose weight, it's gonna go down a little bit, but I don't worry too much about knowing that like, okay, my metabolism was 2879 today. It's like, I just assume it's somewhere in that ballpark and the way I set up my calories like we're gonna go through next is in line with just a more or less an estimate. All right guys, this is the part you've all been waiting for. Um, it's also probably the part that you skipped everything else to get to if you checked on the uh, the table of contents below I would suggest you go back and watch the other stuff because I think it's actually really really important But if you did skip to if you did skip through this stuff um, Here we go. We're gonna go through my like I'm gonna use myself as an example here But this stuff is really really straightforward and I don't think this is like the key and the secret to everything but it does matter and it is a starting point and you do have to understand it so um, very simply, like this is like basic math, like a, uh, like a first grader could figure it out. Um, I like, there's a ton, like, and first off, before I get into it, you're going to see calorie counters. Like I do a different calorie counter that is a little bit more elaborate uh, for free. If you like, if you click the link and you get 52 free workouts along with it, you can check that out. But you're going to see all kinds of different calorie counter, uh, calorie calculators. And the truth is, if you use them all correctly, especially the simple ones like this, 
you don't have to really worry about if one gives you 2,100 calories and the other one gives you 22. Those, that, that 100 calories is putting you roughly in the same spot. Um, so don't worry about like, oh my God, which one do I use? Which one's right? To be honest, if you use them correctly, they're all going to be roughly right. So why complicate it when this is actually going to basically work? I mean, the, the reality is, is the reason why a calorie calculator won't work for you has more to do with the fact that maybe it was a little bit confusing and you didn't use it properly. They're, if they had a lot of like, you know, different uh, activ activity multipliers, it might have tripped you out a little bit. But in a lot of cases, if you use this and didn't start losing weight, I would bet a lot more on the fact that you just didn't follow it closely uh, more than the idea that this just didn't work for you. So um, goal body weight. Now, how to come up with it. A lot of people like, you know, I don't care what the weight is. Truth is, if you don't have a goal body weight, I would actually just go use a BMI chart. And then you can Google that, just search BMI. You'll find a healthy range for yourself. And that'll give you an idea of where you want to be. And for me, my goal body weight or my ideal body weight or just a close guess of where I'm going to feel my best or where I'm going to kind of be where I want to be and like have the look I want and all that stuff is probably going to be about 180 pounds. And it might be lower. It might be a little bit higher. I'm not too concerned about that, but uh, I'm about, what did I say earlier? 194.5 as of like 11 this morning. Um, so I'm going to plug that in uh, with 180. So 180, oh, that's terrible. Uh, 180 times 10, 1800. Whoop. And I'll give myself a range. Why not? 12 times 180, 21, 60. Don't worry, I didn't get that math on my foot. We did that right before we started the video. Um, so this would be like a good range for me to be in. Now, my calories, if you've been following along with my process on Instagram, um, I'm probably closer to this. Now, this doesn't take into account what we were talking about earlier for people that move around a lot and all that. And either of these numbers are going to work. Honestly, I would actually lose weight higher than, higher than this, but I actually feel pretty comfortable here. And the key with the calories is that, I mean, these are actually both low for me, I think. And if I got to one of these numbers and I was just hungry and I was like, like actually in my stomach just like did not feel like it was enough food, that's a pretty good indication that... I'm creating a deficit with these numbers that is actually pretty big. Like I might be like 195 pounds and losing two pounds a week because the deficit is that big. There's nothing wrong with being like, yeah, that seems a little bit low and we'll close it off. Or maybe a situation where you're actually following it closely and not losing weight as much as fast as you want. Or maybe you do have a, a date you want to be ready for or something, which, you know, if you're going to do that, you may want to push the pace a little bit. But the idea I always tell people is for one, you want to be accurate with your numbers and be able to be a little bit like honest with yourself in terms of just how closely you're tracking, but also give it time to work and like just be more really, this is a very, very simple ballpark of your metabolism and what's going to create. And like if you're trying to lose two pounds a week and it feels awful, pull it back a little bit. Like you got a ton of calorie space. Like for me right now, I estimate my metabolism somewhere around like I was talking about earlier, around 2,800 a day, something like that. If I'm eating 1,800, like every 500 calories deficit you create. So if I'm in a, a deficit of 10,000 calories a day, and if I do that actually every day, I'm going to lose two pounds a week. Every like 3,500 calories creates a fat loss of one pound. So if you're doing 500, a 500 calorie deficit a day, that's going to be one pound a week. If you can do the math there simply. And if I'm doing a thousand calorie deficit a day, I'm going to be losing two pounds. And you're like, okay, well, how do I lose three pounds a week? And I'm like, bad idea. Because like, you're going to get hungry. You're going to get cravings. Like, it's not going to be a good idea for most people. However, if you're one of those people who's like 250 pounds and your metabolism is up like, you know, way high, um, just eating normally might create a deficit. I have a client that like lost, you know, 80 pounds in, in a matter of a year which, so she, on a consistent basis, like all the way down, and like in the early going when we started, she was losing three pounds a week, and that slowed down as her metabolism lowered, and her, her calories stayed pretty well the same. Um, so that's a good ballpark. Start there. If you feel hungry and you want to, raise them up a little bit. If you don't feel hungry at all, you can lower them down a little bit, but gauge it yourself because you're going to have to make adjustments, maybe. But I would check that if, the, if this isn't working, and I mean like you're not hungry at all and it's not doing anything, I would be 
it would be best to scrutinize your tracking accuracy versus going to find another workout or another diet or something like that, or your metabolism is not broken. Uh, in terms of protein, we went over it earlier and why, why it's important and why it may not be that important. The leaner you, the, the leaner you get, the more important this is going to be. However, if you're overweight and you got a lot of weight to lose, it might still be important for obviously a little bit of a raise to your metabolism, although the heavier you are, the less you probably need that. But the big one would be if you're someone who gets hungry easily and that's going to affect you, it may be better to get a gram of, pro get a gram of protein per goal body weight. So if your goal body weight, like mine is 180, I shoot for 180. Again, if you've been following my plan on Instagram, you probably notice that I'm usually around 160. So you're like, oh, you're not following 180. It's like, for one, I've got like, I'm not even that lean yet to the point where like this becomes more and more, more important. And to be honest, this is not a scientific calculation. If you look across the board, you can find numbers like 0 0.7 to 1 gram per lean body mass. And the thing is, like, finding out how much lean body mass you have is not practical. You're going to have to go get a, like a DEXA scan. You're going to have to pay a hundred bucks. Like you're going to set up appointment. Like, like all this stuff is just like in that calculation 0 0.7. So I've got to have like 160.2 grams of protein a day. Like let's not confuse this stuff. If you're getting, if you're getting anywhere close to this within 10 or 20 grams, you're probably getting all the benefits you need. The more lean mass you have, the more muscle mass you have, and the less fat you have, the more getting this, or even maybe even a little bit higher, can be beneficial to continuing to lose fat. If you're overweight, like I said before, it's more about something that'll help you manage hunger, um, and you know it's, it's going to increase lean body mass and that type of thing. So protein comes after calories, but this is like just a simple way to come up with calories and protein. And what I wanted to talk about after this was just if all you're focused on is the numbers and you're just like eating whatever you can and you're like tracking chips and you're drinking alcohol on like, you know, like twice a week or something like that, you might find that like, yeah, it's great to have the plan, but all of this stuff is kind of taking you away from it. The more you stick those like processed foods and snacks into your diet and like if you're eating all the time and honestly tracking sounds great because like, oh, all I've had to do, I have to do is like get my fitness pal and that type of thing. The truth is, is people complain about tracking all the time because it's kind of tedious. Like you're going to find out that hitting these numbers and getting to your goals is going to require you to start saying no to all the food that came up. And like, you know, Jane at work is going to offer you a muffin like she does every freaking day. And you're going to have to say no sometimes, or you're going to have to pull out your phone and track it more often. You're going to have to make sure that that's actually right. So what tracking does is it's going to give you some, like, it's going to empower you to make some decisions about food and like, okay, yeah, I can afford to have this beer and, or two beers. But it's also going to show you that, oh, like, I can't keep eating like a complete asshole all the time. Like, I have to stop snacking like every hour because now I have to track and that's crap. And I'm like, I'm burning through my calories on the day too fast. Or, oh shoot, like Friday nights are hard now because now when I pull up my phone to track, when I go at the restaurant and drink with, you know, my friends, oh shoot, like I usually drink 2,200, like I, I usually take in 2,200 calories at, like every time I go out Friday night. Like, or you're going to be someone who tracks great on the days that they never had a problem, Monday to Thursday oftentimes, but you're going to put the phone away on Friday night and just kind of ignore it and not going to realize why you're not making progress. And this is why I talk about scrutinizing your adherence to your actual plan, because a lot of times people just kind of ignore the parts where they need the most help. So if you track accurately and you're using a scale and you're doing those things and you're putting in the work, you're going to see results. But um, use tracking to put yourself into better habits, to create better meal structure, um, and just eat a m in a more of a routine rather than just thinking that like tracking all of your snacking and, and like you're going to keep a lot of bad food behaviors and eating behaviors um, and just tracking is going to solve all your problems. And I really wanted to talk about that because if this solved everyone's problems on its own, we wouldn't have a, a growing, continuing to grow obesity problem um, or even just people who struggle to get like the fat they want off in terms of the last 10 to 15 pounds. Um, but this is a good thing to understand. It's a good thing to understand that your metabolism is predictable. It's a good under thing to understand that this is going to work if you follow it, but there's more to it. So 
that's going to conclude it. It was a little long-winded, but I think this is the one everyone wants to dig into a little bit. Everyone's interested in calories and how many calories do I eat. And so we figured we'd make it a little bit longer, a little bit more elaborate. If you have any questions, you can shoot them in the comments. You can shoot me an email. If you like the video, if you want to see more of this stuff, send me some feedback. But hit subscribe, please. It'll really help me out. Um, you'll, get, you'll get notified about new videos. And um, yeah, I think that's it for episode one. And uh, see you next week. All right, what's going on YouTube? Today we're going to be going through how to set up your calories for a fat loss plan. We're going to go through calories and protein, your metabolism, setting your calories, and... Oh, we're done. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. What's going on YouTube? Today we're going to be going over um, setting up your calories and protein for a fat loss plan. So we're going to be going on why we're setting those numbers, your metabolism, we're going to actually take you through setting those numbers and important things to consider about a fat loss plan afterwards. So let's get into it.